uh, member of the member of the chapter two executive board and also chair of chapter two's legislative and political action committee. And she may be calling on others to help her uh, in this presentation or add to the presentation. So without any further ado, uh, Lonnie, uh, take it away. Thank, thank you, Tim. Well, it's hard to follow Allison, but it's so great to have this very global overview of why redistricting is important, how it works. And I hope the, that we all get that really we have the ability to impact this. We, we need to impact this process. And this is the most open process that the redistricting commission has ever had. So great timing for us. So as Allison mentioned, the redistricting commission itself has um, criteria that they have been given, but it's not in any priority order. And what uh, the state work group that uh, president our president Candy uh, put together did was we looked at that criteria and we decided that to help us as RPEC members impact this process, we needed to create some uh, priorities among that criteria and perhaps, it's, and in some cases we expanded on that criteria. So what I'm going to do is just start out walking you through the criteria, which I think is available to everybody online, sorry, I'm, I'm not very techie, so I don't, I can't tell you how to access it. So the, the first one, and again, this is from the redistricting commission's own criteria that they were given to look at. The first one that we prioritize, oh, thank you, James, is that we comply with the Federal Voting Rights Act to ensure that minorities have equal opportunity to elect representatives of their choice. We made that our number one criteria. And our reasoning for that was that we need to make sure our electoral processes result in representation at all levels of government based on accurate and fair representation of minority voters and elected officials. And we feel that this would result in a more inclusive government and a more engaged and involved electorate. And then to that, we added some uh, additional considerations based on the relative populations within districts, the commission should draw majority minority districts in which minority groups form an effective majority based on relative populations. And the Department of Justice has previously recognized a majority minority district that includes a minimum of 55% minority voters then and therefore would constitute an effective majority in such a district. So I'm gonna pause, I think, after each of these to just see if there are any questions. Um, gonna need help to see if there are any questions. If not, I'm gonna move forward. The second one that we uh, prioritized was that we provide fair and effective representation, encourage electoral competition, and do not purposely favor or discriminate against any political party or group. We, uh, for this one, also had additional uh, considerations regarding the criteria. And this one I think is really important that the other considerations the commission will review such as keeping intact where possible governmental boundaries of local subdivisions and districts be convenient, contiguous and compact, not be subverted in the interest for solely creating elections that are competitive. In other words, it's a different kind of gerrymandering if we just break everything apart so that every district in the state, if, if even if you could figure it out, was going to be competitive and ignored all this other criteria. Um, and then you heard uh, Allison use these terms as well. The commission should avoid splitting or packing, which means unnecessarily breaking up, for example, communities of color or cities or folks with economic interests or packing, packing everybody that's a Democrat in, in you know, two or three districts or everybody that happens to be a person of color in as few of districts as possible, thus negating the power of their votes. And we should recognize that good government criteria of compactness and preserving political subunit boundaries can still result in countermanding the, the overall needs of recognizing uh, voices uh, of the minority community. 
and that we review the voting patterns of the last three electoral cycles because it will assist the commission in understanding current voting patterns beyond the historical urban rural divide because our state has changed a great deal in the last 10 years. And then finally, the, we added an additional criteria for the commission to use and uh, Allison also referred to this, that they recognize and honor the sovereign tribal interests in recognition of the government to government relationship with federally recognized tribes that the commission should consult with, which they have done each sovereign tribe and hear each of their specific wishes regarding how their tribal land should be treated in respect for their rights of self-determination and representation. And our second additional criteria is that high consideration be given to the economic and cultural priorities and commonalities of communities. Examples of such important economic commonalities would be coastal communities whose economic priorities are timber, fishing, seafood harvesting in general, and tourism as compared to the urban super, suburban communities east of Lake Washington, for example, who have technology as a primary economic driver. Again, reviewing the voting patterns of such communities in the last three cycles will help illustrate how economic commonality changes an electorate's voting priorities. So those are the criteria that we have uh, at the state level prioritized to help us as we review the maps that each of the four commissioners are going to start presenting to us at, uh, beginning on September 21st. So with that, I'd like to offer the opportunity for some of the other work group members to, to weigh in on um, the process and um, where our next steps. And so I'm gonna look to James to see if anybody is raising their hands because I can't always see that. Not seeing any so far. Okay. Uh, Lisa has her hand up. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to um, <clears throat> thank Lonnie and um, President Craig for facilitating this uh, work group and being able to engage members from around the state of our organ, you know, in our organization. Um, I was going to cover um, some of the work that we have done in looking at um, the maps. And I feel like, uh, to be honest, um, Allison's presentation was so comprehensive that my part of the um, presentation is, it would be a little bit redundant. We have looked among other things at the um, redistricting um, organization that Allison uh, referenced, that being daysredistricting.org. We will be, um, as Lonnie said, um, some of us in the work group, but I think we're, we'd love to have you know, more people engaged. Once those maps come out, um, the four versions for the legislative and then four versions for the congressional districts, we will be reviewing them as Lonnie said and putting together our comments. Um, I don't have, we, and anyway, anyway, so anyone who's interested in participating on that, um, I would ask that they, um, follow, I'm not sure how best to follow up, but we will be getting that information out um, so people could participate in the review and putting together what testimony we wanna have. Um, I'm thinking after this presentation that a number of us are inclined to go and look at the League of Women Voters um, information that they have posted, like um, Katrina said. Um, so I would hope that everyone here would um, follow up want to be engaged with reviewing the maps and maybe join us in discussion um, as we prepare our testimony. That's all I have to say. Uh, Christine has her hand up. Christine Craig. Thank you. Um, as uh, Lisa was saying that we're going to be reviewing that and I believe nine on September 30th, um, we had a review, we are plan our little group um, in our chapter had planned to review the commissioners 
um, information on the redistricting. And I, I think this is such an important process and we as chapter members have been really involved in this and welcome any other um, information or uh, input that you would have. And I believe that there was another scheduled uh, review perhaps on September 23rd. I think Lonnie could help me on that. I've, I seem to have messed up my little uh, calendar board. But uh, we want to want to thank everybody and, and uh, the council for their support in seeing this through. We look forward to seeing what the mapping's looking going to look like and in giving our input as well and reviewing. Um, I am excited to review Allison's information, which I haven't done. I, I didn't know about that. Um, so I want to thank everybody for participating today and welcome any input. Thank you. So obviously we've developed this criteria and you know this process for reviewing the maps and applying the criteria with the goal of putting together not only our recommendations, but talking points for those recommendations because we we consider this thanks to the president's leadership and involvement of folks in our work group from around the state an rpac project and we want as many of you who are interested to weigh in and we want to supply you with the tools to do that so um i think the information on the legal women voters um uh, pay, website is going to be great and helpful to everybody uh, we are always help, happy, I'm always help, happy for folks that have never testified before to just, you know, do a little one-on-one -on -one if, if folks are interested in that. But we will do everything we can to supply you with the tools, you know, our, our recommendations, our talking points, why we have, how those maps or our recommendations about the maps line up with or don't line up with our talking point uh, with our criteria uh, carol dotlich has a question in the uh the chat box uh she says is consideration given to communities facing significant change in the near future due to county growth plans um do we know what a great what a great question that is carol um you know i I think it's going to be hard enough to do it with the current uh, uh, census data, which kind of shows you the growth patterns in, in counties and around the state uh, in the last 10 years. So I, obviously, that's one of the biggest tools that we are looking at. And of course, the commission's overall job is to try to do their um, population distribution. Um, but that's a great question. I don't know. Maybe Allison, um, I, I can send that to her as well and see if that is something that some of the groups are figure, have figured out how to look at. Are there any other questions of Lonnie or of Lisa? Uh, Lisa talked about the, the importance of the interactive mapping process. Anything else? Any questions we have before we uh, ask for any final questions and, and wrap up today's forum? Any other questions? I think the dialogue will continue. You you can uh, email. I'm certainly email the RPEC uh, email site, and those questions will get to the work group, the state work group that President Craig uh, formed. Um, and so the dialogue will continue. Um, John Smith has a question. His hand up. You mentioned September 30th. Uh, is that a date uh, for another? Uh, our pet get together online to talk about the maps or some other issue. Do you want to take that, Lonnie or uh, Lisa? Yes, if the work group is meeting that uh, put together the criteria to uh, look at the first batch, the the two batches of maps, the congressional and legislative district maps from the four commissioners. Uh, John, does that answer your question? I wonder if it's a meeting that's going to be open to others. I'm going to defer to Lonnie to, on that. I, 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 
Uh, I'm not sure. Lonnie? Um, I think we welcome participation. We would want to make sure that, uh, you know, I, we would want to know who's going to participate that day uh, as soon as possible, just so that we're prepared and make sure people have all the materials and, and uh, background. Uh, uh, James has put in the chat box the uh, RPEC email address. So I think folks can email info at rpeclaw.org if you want to participate in that uh, September 30th meeting, which is two to five on the September 30th. Is that correct, Lonnie? Yes. I believe? Yes. Okay. Um, any other uh, questions before I kind of close it out here? Oh, Lisa. Um, Lisa? I, I would just say, um, uh, you know, it, as everyone has, can see, this is a very short and compressed timeline with a lot of information um, to be considered. So the work group meeting, as I understand it, we're going to be, um, you know, trying to very intensively do the review um, at a granular level of both the legislative districts and the congressional districts, um, and then prepare our comments and talking points. And then between that period and between that period and when the public uh, comments are is really a short period of time. So, so I know that a number of us are committed to doing the legwork to prepare comments and talking points at that meeting and make them available to our broad RPEC um, membership. So if people are not able to you know, slog through the minutia on um, the 30th with us, those of us that have been you know, in the weeds on this for a while, um, I would just reassure and, and Lonnie, as our as our chair, I would you know look to you to make sure I'm on track here. But you know I would assure you that our intention is to get some concise comments and talking points to to all of our members. And as Lonnie said, you know we're we're committed to helping people testify. So so we'll be do, doing the heavy lifting between now and the 30th on the 30th trying to come up with something and then in very short order, making that broadly available to our members so that we can then uh, engage in the testimony process. Um, at least that's my understanding of, of our, our timeline here and what we intend to do on the 30th. Is that a fair uh, description, Lonnie? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Then so, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead. So, so I would just say, so John, um, you know, um, appreciating your interest in wanting to be engaged, um, know that we will be uh, continuing to reach out to everybody who's been on this, as well as making it broadly available to our membership. Thanks. And I want to point out that, again, what we're doing here on redistricting is a part of a stepped up effort to make sure our efforts in uh, Olympia, in the Capitol, and in um, Washington, D.C., affecting our pensions, that includes PERS-1 COLA and reinstituting a permanent PERS-1 COLA are, are heard. And so it is a part of an overall uh, widespread stepped up effort. So I don't want you to forget that all not, not only is September 21st, the date that the commissioners are rele releasing their uh, versions of the maps, that's also the day of the next meeting of the Select Committee on Pension Policy, which again is, is gonna be uh, tackling a uh, very important uh, number aspect, uh, not to, uh, uh, considering another uh, important aspect uh, affecting our the PERS-1 colon, other uh, pensions as well. I believe, James, uh, a, a reminder will go out to the membership to, to log on and, and to testify or to email comments uh, for the subcommittee meeting on the 21st. Is that correct? James says yes. So again, redistricting is, is a part of it. We have to do just everything if we're gonna make a dent or make any progress on, on pension colas uh, at all. But again, I wanna remind you what uh, Lonnie and Lisa and Allison have reminded you that the important dates that are coming up, September 21st, the maps come out. Um, uh, then on, again, the next big dates that we wanna be prepared for, I believe and Lonnie and Lisa and others can correct me is again, Tuesday, October 5th at 7 p.m. That is why, where the, the public outreach virtual statewide meeting to talk about the legislative district maps will take place. And then on su Saturday, October 9th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. will be the statewide virtual public interactive uh, meeting on the state, on the congressional map uh, versions that have come out. 
And so those are things that we want to get prepared for. And I think what the work group is doing will prepare those who are interested and those who are on this call, if you wish to log on and testify there. Uh, I'm looking now to Lonnie, uh, Lisa, anyone else on the uh, work group for any final words before I uh, close it out and, and uh, see if the president wishes to make any final uh, statements as well. I'm not seeing any, so um, uh, it, uh, President Craig, if, if, you, if you'd just like to say a quick thank you and goodbye. Um, uh, uh, we, again, I think we thank you for your leadership here in forming the work group. Uh, again, as part of the overall effort that we have to do just everything as we try to make progress on our initiatives. But if you'd like to say a, a, a few words of, of goodbye and thanks, uh, I think that'd be appropriate. Thank you, Tim, I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody that's on today, and I appreciate the work group that was statewide. Those people gave up their time and their effort and trying to make a difference for our whole state by their participation and how important this is in the redistricting. And like we said, the redistricting only comes every 10 years and it's jumped up on us again, but we've got people that are really concerned about what's important to us who we're gonna get elected, who's gonna be in the legislature, who's gonna be our congressional representatives and taking care of all the members across the whole state. So thank you everybody for all the work that you did today and thank you for joining us. And it's recorded, we've got it recorded. So how can people get the recording is what I'd like to make sure that people know because there's people that could not attend today that I actually talked to and they had other appointments. And we wanna be able to get this out. And James, let us know how we can get this out so that we can uh, publicize what happened today and get it so that everybody can go on and look at it if you'll let us know and appreciate everybody. Thank you. And again, I, final word, thank you so much for everyone who attended today. Thank you so much for your interest for your activism uh, going forward. This is a big initiative and it's important that we're involved. And I'm so glad and grateful that you are here today. I'm so gra grateful to, uh, to President Craig, to Allison McCaffrey, to Lonnie Johns Brown, to Lisa Randlett, and to all the other presenters and everyone who asked questions today. It'll make a very big difference. And with that, I'm gonna say goodbye. Have a good rest of your day.